promises. And you're coming for and you from AP. AP. Yes. Are you ready when you're ready? Thank you. No, <laughs> So, how much did you both know about Yves Saint Laurent before you started working on the film? I actually didn't know that much, to be really sincere. I I, I knew the um, the silhouette, the glasses and uh, a certain idea of perfection in his work but but that's also i was starting from that point the preparation whereas you had fashion connections i had fashion fashion connections indeed uh no my mother used to dress her uh, she used to dress there uh so uh i knew a bit but not that much we we, we uh my parents and 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 eve and pierre had friends in common but um but that's all I didn't know that much. I had images of you kind of <laughs> hanging around the salon. <laughs> well, I had imi- I had the same images uh, when I was a child, but I, I didn't actually live those images. I, just in my fantasies, I was also uh, doing some catwalking through Saint Laurent, but only in my fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I liked about um, some interviews that you've done for the film is that you both seemed quite um, emotional about seeing the Mondrian dress. Yes. So explain to me why that had such a reaction. Why you had such a reaction. Well, I was quite surprised about being moved by a dress. I really didn't think that could happen. Uh, before the movie, I was like, well, what the fuck, it's just a dress, like, leave me alone. <laughs> and uh, after that, when I, I really studied for five months and worked with a stylist and learned so much about the history and, and the way a fashion studio works, actually works, and um, I, I realized, uh, yeah, all the, um, the, the craft and the work be- behind those dresses. So I was, uh, when I discovered, the, especially the Mondrian, I was really moved because there is all the genius uh, of Saint Laurent in one dress. In it's really impacting. I don't know how to say it with other words, but we were really moved. And the fact also that it was the real dresses, you know, it was in cold room or museums, and it was just here for the movie and for one scene. And you know that is the dress he really touched and uh, he really created. And so that was that was yeah, that was something. I was more moved by the. Um uh, it's an aspect in Yves Saint Laurent's work that I really adore is uh, the fact that he he he's always been doing a transmission between art and and women and the street. Um, it started with Mondrian. Well, he's I mean he, even even when he took the head of Dior at the age of twenty one, he really transmitted Dior's image and Dior's uh, th- there's a, a, a big respect of Yves Saint Laurent for artists in general and he did it with Mondrian and then he did it again uh, he did it again with Picasso with the Ballet Russe with uh, all the all the Russian avant-garde so he really um, he had this um, he had this thing he could read just he could just look at one book on India and create and create a whole Indian collection as if he had lived there for twenty years. He had this uh, perception, and and the fact of of deciding deciding that women should be masterpieces should be uh, like a piece of art. Uh, I find that very poetic. He's the first one to do it. And how's the reaction been in France? Because it's been out since January. I believe. It's a very good reaction. Yeah, yeah. it's a warm welcome. Fair, well, the audience is there because it's a big success, public success. The critics as well, I must say. Um, what what touches me the most is, well, of course the audience, but is the fact that people come out of the film saying that they've just seen a beautiful love story and and never they, they just tag it with... Uh, with uh, with something um, like just oh it's a gay movie uh, it's like a, oh it's a gay story not at all they just uh, I've got friends that have told me how much they were touched for example by the uh, the first kissing scene which for the anecdote was our first shooting day oh. we had to French kiss obviously we're French so we had to French kiss all day long in front of American tourists but um, 
and uh, which was a good way to tell the crew, by the way, this is what it's about, guys. <laughs> it's going to okay? be like that. It's going to be like that for two months, right? And uh, but apart from that, uh, I've got many friends that were very touched by the, this scene, just saying it's one of the most beautiful scenes I've seen in my life, and never they reduce it um, in a cliche thing. And I find that I'm very touched by that because I I think it's one of the first film where people actually. Um, have this impression of just seeing a beautiful love story and that's it, full stop. And they were like that. I mean, the, the couple, Yves Saint Laurent and Pierre Berger. Pierre Berger always said that for him, homosexuality was just like being left-handed. And, and, but they were like that in 1956. And, um, and that's what I loved about the script as well, from straight, straight from the beginning, is the fact that uh, we could feel the audacity and how much they, they couldn't care less about political correctness and and they, they never fell into the cliché. They invented them. They cre I mean, they had Paris at their feet. Even before that, even, even before having this empire. Um, so um, I, I'm proud of that. Were people shocked by... Because obviously people knew that he had trouble um, with drugs. And were, were they shocked by the kind of partying, sex and more drug side of, of the film? I, I don't know if they were shocked but they, they obviously discovered something about the character like we did when we read the script how far he went in, in that uh, in that path you know? self destruction yeah, in, in that self destruction so I think people are, are really learning something on that point and that's that is why he's a legend you know we, we had to tell that part of the story the darker sides because um, because it's him it's part of him and he was uh, he was sick he's uh, he, he yeah, he was manic depressive at 20, 22 years old. He discovered that. So that that's part of him. The um, yeah, th those bad sides, and and we wanted to not to avoid that, obviously. Um. Finally, how are you both fashionistas? Kind of. I don't know. Oh, well, you are. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> but you can afford to be with your. <laughs> no. Um, I'm just trying to find the right proportion. I'm still, uh, I mean, I'm 42. I still haven't found it. But uh, um, I like fashion, but... Uh, I guess we're not front row every every week or every month, but we no, we like beautiful no. things. We like fashion. We've been interested in these, those kind of characters for obviously like uh, six or seven months. But, yes. uh, it's but not, uh, yeah. It's more like... Um, it's it's something to do. I mean, what we lived during the shooting, I must say, was very very strong. Um, uh, not only by the fact that we worked a lot, but uh, we were moved. We were truly moved uh, by the by the whole story. And living twenty years of a love story in two months is quite exhausting. I must say, I lost five kilos. Thank God. Uh, but um, but. Um, the fashion did, it's not a question, of, it, it's not really fashion, it's more create creativity. It's more the fact that he was, he was a genius, really. Uh, but even a political one in his own way, because I mean, he, I mean, he brought trousers to women, he brought um, uh, tuxedos or dinner jackets to women, um, but the trench coat, I mean, he invented so many things um, that, it, it's not only fashion. It's more. It's more than that. It's more. It's more the story. Um, it's a bit like Amadeus, the film. Uh, you have a genius, and at the same time, the best way to tell that um, we're definitely taking more time, by the way. Um, and um, the best way to tell that story was through the love story, because it was um, because there were there were very strong partners, and um, I think Pierre Berger is is nearly as good in business as he was in fashion but uh it was a very good team and even after they separated uh they split up uh they i mean they continued for i mean the whole the whole story was 50 years Whew. i remember that auction as well yeah i remember that we all remember covering that for work so yeah thank you very much thank, thank you lovely to meet you both congratulations on you. the thank film thank you very much thank you <laughs> You again. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Um, so to start off with, um, what was your aim with this film? What did you want to do? 
je voulais raconter une grande histoire française qui est du souffle. Euh, L'histoire de gens qui se battent pour leurs rêves, euh, quitte à échou échouer ou se brûler les ailes, mais en tout cas qui ont des rêves et qui se battent pour, pour se transcender. Et, et à travers cette histoire d'amour, j'avais aussi envie de, de me rapprocher du génie, c'est-à-dire d'utiliser quelque chose de très familier, de très commun à tous, euh, qui est l'amour. Et à travers le regard d'un des deux, raconter le génie de l'autre, ce qui est toujours difficile d'expliquer, de, de, parce qu'il y a quelque chose d'inexplicable dans la création et dans le, et dans le génie. Et je, voilà, j'avais envie de raconter tout ça et... Et il me semblait que l'histoire d'Yves Saint Laurent me, me le permettait. Okay, quick translation. I wanted to tell a great French story, really something that had breath and energy to it. Um, I wanted to tell the story of people fighting for their dreams, even if they may fail or if they burn their wings. And it seemed to me that using a love story was the most appropriate thing to do, to to be able to get close to genius. And it's hard to to know how to do this, but using the gaze of the one person who loves the other, the one on the other, it seemed to me I could tell the story of genius and the story of Yves Saint Laurent seemed the most appropriate for this. Um, and how easy was it for you to cast? Did Were you worried about getting, finding someone who looked like specific people? Was that in your head or were you just looking at the talent? C'est évidemment très important d'avoir des, 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 des acteurs quand on fait un biopic qui ressemblent aux personnages principaux, du moins qui ont quelque chose en commun. C'était le cas évidemment pour Pierre Ninet, qui est, qui a, c'est pas tellement une ressemblance physique, mais c'est plutôt une élégance, un, un port euh, euh, naturel, quelque chose d'assez altier. Euh, et par ailleurs, il y a surtout ça en commun chez il me semblait, chez, chez cet acteur et ce personnage historique, c'est ce mélange euh, d'intelligence pure, parce que Pierre Ninet est un acteur ultra brillant et ultra intelligent. Et en ça, il se rapproche un petit peu du, du génie Saint-Laurent. Et il a quelque chose d'impertinent en plus. Quelqu'un que j'ai vu avant dans des comédies, qui a beaucoup d'humour. Et Saint-Laurent, dans, dans l'intime, était quelqu'un de très drôle, de très... Euh, de, de, de très taquin, vous voyez, et, et du coup, oui, lui correspondait. Après, sur le, le, le reste du cast, j'avais quelquefois un peu plus de latitude, euh, ne serait-ce que pour Pierre Berger, parce que Pierre Berger, à l'époque, personne, euh, enfin aujourd'hui, personne ne se souvient à quoi il ressemblait. Donc euh, là, c'était, euh, euh, disons, un peu plus libre. So it's important, obviously, that there's something physical, but when I look for actors, what is very important in the sense of a in the biopic was to find something in the essence of the character, and Pierre Ninet certainly had something physical, but not just in the physical traits, more in his way of holding himself, handling himself, the sort of height and elegance, the sort of grace that he has. Um, also, this mix of pure, pure intelligence, but something that Pierre Ninet has, he's really highly brilliant and highly gifted actor, but also has impertinence and in Yves Saint Laurent had this humor that Pierre Ninet has a humor and in a sense a tease as well and it was, can be quite funny in private life and that was important. With the rest of the cast it's slightly different for example in the case of Pierre Berger it's more a question of attitude. People don't really remember exactly what he was like but it was finding something that could, could reflect this attitude and that's what um, the actor had. Thank you. Um, explain how it worked with using the original dresses. I hear that they, it was very specific with the amount of hours they were allowed to wear them and it must have been hard to find people to fit into them. C'était à la fois un, une chose essentielle de, de, pour moi de, de, de filmer les, les vraies robes. Déjà, déjà parce qu'on ne peut pas faire des copies. Enfin, euh, je n'avais pas envie de faire des copies d'aussi de, belles pièces. Euh, et en plus, euh, même si ça avait été possible, c est, c est, pour la plupart c'est impossible parce que même les tissus ont disparu. Donc il fallait vraiment travailler en étroite collaboration avec la fondation euh, Pierre Berger Yves Saint Laurent qui fait un travail de, de, de musée finalement avec un euh, département de conservation qui conserve euh, je crois plus de 5000 robes, quelque chose comme ça, des dessins, beaucoup de choses qui concernent évidemment toute 
sorte de création euh, d'Yves Saint Laurent. Donc, euh, donc euh, ça a été à la fois un, un, un vrai bonheur de, re, de voir à nouveau ces robes portées, euh, mises en lumière, euh, euh, en recréant par exemple les ballets russes. C'était un moment assez extraordinaire de fusion entre le cinéma et, euh, et ce monde de la mode euh, d'hier. Euh, qui revivait cette émotion de revoir ces, ces pièces sublimes portées. Et en même temps, c'était évidemment très compliqué. C'est comme si on tournait avec des, des Picasso euh, euh, et qu'on se les donnait comme ça en tracteur. Donc, euh, il fallait être très précautionneux. Et, euh, et euh, c'était euh, bah, beaucoup d'organisation, euh, un temps de tournage limité. Euh, et, et il faut imaginer autour de chaque robe à peu près cinq personnes en, en laborantin, comme ça, habillées avec des, des, des blouses blanches. Euh, euh, et en s'affolant euh, dès que le mannequin voulait s'asseoir ou, euh, ou aller ne serait-ce qu'au WC, enfin c'était impossible. Donc euh, il, fallait, euh, il, il fallait être très très précautionneux. Voilà, ce sont des pièces qui ont pour certaines 50 ans, donc euh, elles sont extrêmement fragiles et elles sont inestimables parce qu'il n'en reste presque plus au monde. It was essential for me to film using real dresses. Um, I didn't want to make copies, and even if copies were possible, but they're not really because there's such great design and a lot of the material no longer exists. Um, so I had to work very closely with the foundation, Yves Saint Laurent Pierre Berger, who is very much work, does the work of a museum be, of preservation because they look after the costumes, the materials, sketches, etc. There was something amazing about bringing them to light and put, bringing them into the limelight again, very moving to see, for example, this the, when they did the catwalk scene, the fashion show of the Ballet Russe, and to see those again, um, there was this huge emotion. But the work behind was you had to be so extremely careful and it was a bit like moving around the Picasso and having five people around. You had, there were so many rules and people in, five people in white coats around one costume and it wasn't simple for the actor to, to the model to actually go to the loo or sit down. It was, basically it was this high precaution that had to be, you had to be really on alert all the time. Okay, um, final question. Um, there's another film about Yves Saint Laurent coming out um, towards the end of the year. Do you think he is someone that people can just keep on making films about? There's so many different parts of his life and he's still such an icon. Uh, oui, il y a beaucoup de films qui, se, qui, qui ont été faits, qui vont se faire sur Yves Saint Laurent, euh, je suppose, et, et parce que c'est un personnage extrêmement riche et, et, et intéressant. Euh, donc, euh, euh, moi, je sais que je, je me suis nourri euh, beaucoup de documentaires euh, qui, ont, qui ont été faits, donc euh, je ne suis pas surpris que ça inspire d'autres gens. Euh, je trouve ça normal et, euh, et j'irai le voir parce que j'aime le cinéma et, et, euh, et que je suis curieux des Yves Saint Laurent aussi. So yes, of course, because he's such a rich character, um, there's bound to be other films made of him, and I really kind of fed my imagination by watching loads of documentaries about him and I think it's normal that people will be interested in doing and I, I want to go and see the film and I have this curiosity so that's something that a lot of people will have. Thank you very much. Lovely to meet you. Congratulations you. on the film.